In this fifth and final part to the Tower Basics series, I'll summarize some of the important findings of the previous videos and briefly talk about how to approach tower optimization in a more general sense in preparation for the upcoming Science Olympiad season. Hopefully one of the critical things you took away from this video series is how important it is to have a good design for the cross bracing of your tower. All of these towers have the exact same mass legs and there was almost a factor of 10 difference between the best and the worst design. It's also very important to balance the number of vertical cross bracing layers with the strength of the legs. Here I showed that with the three towers on the right and found that four layers with 6.25 centimeter spacing happen to give the best result. As with any of these structural balsa builds, good technique is critical for success. I would recommend using a high quality assembly jig to help with the precision needed. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, constructing a jig out of other materials is certainly possible as well. Another challenging construction skill with these towers is just working with the thin, light crossmember balsa wood. You will most likely find that you'll eventually want to use 1 32nd inch thick pieces for the bracing material. If you haven't had practice building with balsa that thin, I would recommend practicing a bit before building full size towers. As you can imagine, with a two way symmetric build like this, not only will your tower only be as strong as your weakest leg, if you have a single bad joint, it will cause it to fail early. Larger towers can have hundreds of joints and that takes a lot of patience to make sure every one is high quality. If you are looking for a good exercise this summer before we know the official rules for next season, it would be good practice to build a couple mini towers like this to get used to building with these materials and techniques. Maybe even challenge yourself to see if you can beat my best efficiency score in this series. I'll be sure to leave a link to the assembly jig STL file I used if you want to duplicate these dimensions exactly. I hope you also learned a little bit about buckling theory in this series. Euler's critical load formula is very important for tower design. The most important aspects for what we're concerned with is that simple material properties such as density and square cross-sectional area are linearly proportional to buckling strength, but the length of the section has a squared relationship to strength. We were able to experimentally see the difference between a good and bad tower design using the high-speed camera. The legs on the tower on the left are buckling as if only the ends are constrained. You can see the nice smooth buckling shape in the entire leg. The tower on the right has cross bracing that properly constrains points along the leg. As a result, you can see that the leg when it's near its failure has the same buckling shape, but this time it's happening within the shorter piece of the leg in its alternating direction. This is the first time I had ever seen such clear evidence of buckling theory in action with a tower like this. I think it's a really cool comparison. We now know that the X design is very good for tower cross bracing, but that alone doesn't get us to a final tower design. Depending on the size and angle, it will be a pretty involved optimization process to figure out what combination is best for a given design goal. The key to remember is that the legs and cross bracing are very much tied together. I like to think of this optimization problem by using a mass budget for each component group. You definitely want to use four identical legs, so weigh them together and keep track of that mass. When you choose an initial design for your cross bracing, weigh all of those pieces together and keep track of that value as well. When you are tweaking your design, you can think about if you want to increase or reduce the mass of a group as a whole, and then choose the material that will accomplish what you are trying to achieve. With the cross bracing, you can consider using lighter or more dense wood or adding more layers. One thing I haven't talked about much yet, but is also very important to consider, is the glue weight of your structure. This can become a very important factor as you potentially have hundreds of glue joints for a large tower. If you keep consistent records of your builds, it's pretty easy to compute the glue mass. Even if it's not 100% accurate due to sanding the pieces or using a normalized length mass instead of the actual final length, the key is that it will be accurate relative from one build to the next. For example, here are three of my tower builds with three, four, and five cross bracing layers. The three layer tower has 60 glue joints, 15 per side. The four layer one has 80 total glue joints and the five layer one has 100. If we take the final mass and subtract the material mass of the legs and the cross bracing, we are left with the glue mass. 
In this case, you can see that each time I added a layer, it added almost 0.1 grams of glue. This is also a good way to see if you're being consistent with your glue application from build to build. It looks like I was a little better with the five layer build, only adding an additional 0.07 grams. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video series on towers as much as I had making it. Please let me know in the comments or reach out directly if you have any suggestions for videos like this in the future. Have a great summer and I hope some of you will take me up on the mini tower build challenge.